Hi, this is your host Sapnil Bharatiya and we are here at Open Source Summit in Seattle and today we have with us Dr. Hakeem Hasid, Acting Chief Researcher and Executive Director at TII. Dr. Hakeem, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for the invitation. Before we kind of, of course, get started, I would love to know a bit about TII to tell us about the organization. Sure. So TII, Technology Innovation Institute, is a research institute uh, that is researching on new technologies. We are under the ATRC, the Abu Dhabi Advanced Technology Research Council. And the whole objective of the uh, TAI is actually to push the borders of the research around technology. Uh, TAI is the research arm of the ATRC, and it is actually building IP in collaboration, and this is very important, in collaboration with industry and academia. Uh, TAI is composed of 10 research centers, uh, among them, we have the cryptography, we have autonomous robotics, we have directed energy, biotech, and we have a center focused on AI, just to list uh, the, these few. Uh, from my side, so I'm uh, leading the efforts uh, in the generative AI uh, world, and the team and I were building actually things related to large language models, uh, and we are improving and advancing our model, that is the Falcon large language model. How important is open source for TII? TII actually is, is, is great fun, I would say, of uh, open source. But it's not just a fun, actually. It wants to play a big role in this open source community and the open source AI uh, specifically. So the reasons behind that are multiple. So the first thing is that we believe that the AI is something big enough that not only one institute or one institution could do everything. So it has to be a shared effort between different actors in the community. So this is one thing. The second thing is that we believe that uh, AI is a critical tool, I would say, and shouldn't be staying only between the hands of few actors who would be playing uh, the role of controlling uh, everything. So we want to be uh, an active actor in the open source and this has to be uh, built with the community and for the community uh, in general. If you look at the TII, you know, and when you look at all the, of course you said Gen AI LLMs is one of the, the other areas that you focus on uh, when it comes to using the term open source, open source in my opinion is not just about the code, it's also about the collaboration. At the same time, it can be also about the code because with open source, you don't have a single entity which is based in a specific country. And just because of the trade embargo or something, you can cut off the whole region from the technology. You are dependent on that whims and fancies of that country, whims and fancies. With open source, you are not that restricted. So. Do you also feel that in this changing geopolitical world, a lot of wars going on, where, you know, for, for independence or sovereignty from the tech point of view, open source, I mean, we don't have to look at the answers. The answer is already there. Absolutely. No, I, I think the, it's a critical thing. Like uh, the open source is not actually helping in developing the technology at the end of the day, but it brings also freedom. That's, that's an important point that the open source community in general, be it in AI or in, in, in systems, is bringing. I think we have seen this, this, this initiative, the Linux uh, has, has actually opened the, the, the path to the other technologies where we have been sort of, uh, I would say, uh, almost slaves of specific operating systems. The Linux came in to actually uh, empower the developers, the users, bringing in a new, op new open source operating system that actually gave a lot of power to, to the community to, again, to be free at the end of the day. So we see it also in the AI. While we are not at the, the same level of maturity as the open source operating systems, but it's just the start, and this will actually open opportunities to be more open, more free into taking this technology to the next level. Is this the first time that you folks are at the Open Source Summit or you have been before? For us, it's, a, it's, the, it's the first time indeed. What brought you here this time? Well, to, to be honest, I think there is a good push towards the open source and 
the 30 years plus that uh, the Linux Foundation was there, or at least the operate, from the operating system perspective, should actually give us more ideas on how to act. We have a lot of lessons to learn from this community, and that's very important. Maybe the things we will be learning will not be applied directly on the open source AI, but this experience is valuable, and that's we are, why we are here today. And I think this will not be the last time we come to, the, to these kind of events. We need definitely to learn from their experience and get some uh, great lessons from them to do better eventually uh, on the uh, open source AI. I believe that the open source AI is slightly much more complicated, although we will, uh, the, the, the Linux Foundation will inspire us a lot, uh, but the challenges are much more complicated. The requirements are, are different, but definitely to have a good start, we need to learn from the 30 plus years of the Linux Foundation uh, that have passed. When it comes to AI, when it comes to regular software, there are some differences, you know. Since you're mentioning Linux, you know, it's not as simple as setting up the LAMP stack, you know, you know, and that with frameworks, models, you know, like so many variables are there in terms of AI, or let's use the word Gen AI. What kind of scope do you see is there in the AI Gen AI space? You know, one of the things that we say uh, in the past, we have been saying that someone to start in the open source community, you need a laptop and the, an internet connection, right? That doesn't, it's not valid anymore in the generative AI world because for example, to build those models, you need actually to have a lot of compute that even like uh, medium companies do not have access to it uh, in general. So I think currently the open source AI world or community, we are referring more to the models, right? The weights of the models. So we open the weights and we say that we are open source. I think we need to go slightly further uh, in the sense that we need, for example, to open the training code, the code base, right? This has to be open. We will not reach a full transparency that we are claiming today. Everybody is claiming actually. Uh, as a community without opening the different building blocks of these pipelines, including the data, the uh, cleaning of the data, the different scripts, the different systems, the code that helps in that, the training code, the evaluations that we are having. So, so far we are focusing more into releasing the weights of the code, of the, of the model, but I believe that there is a lot to be done into the different aspects to make it really an open source AI strategy. And do you see enough efforts are being made or you think that we have to do a lot of catch up to do when it comes to, because if you look at OpenAI, the company, there's nothing open source about it. Absolutely. You know? We tend to compare between the open source AI and the closed source AI like the open AI. I think the comparison is not fair uh, in the sense that we don't know what is behind the, the scene when it comes to those closed models, right? Uh, and in my opinion, there is more than just a model behind, behind the scene, right? So taking a model that is open source, comparing it to a much bigger system, ecosystem, I would say that is, not, that is not fair. But what we see today, and that's very positive and that's very inspiring, is that a lot of people are supporting the open source AI movement. Uh, still, we have a lot of challenges, a lot of requirements, as I said uh, previously, but there is a lot to come. There are a lot of initiatives. I think there will be also a need to some sort of co better coordination of these efforts and these, these initiatives. Uh, but yeah, there are a lot of things that are done. And in the coming, I would say, months, because the speed of, uh, on how things are moving forward is extremely fast, in the coming months, we may see few uh, sort of uh, initiatives that will try to coordinate better all these efforts that are around. Can you talk about any efforts, any on ALMs that are at TII that you can talk about? Correct. So we have uh, the main uh, LLM that we have is the Falcon LLM, the Falcon series, and they, it comes with uh, three sizes, I would say. We have the 7 billion, the 40 billion, and then 180 billion parameter model. So the uh, 40 billion parameter was released back in May 2023, uh, and it was trained on a 1 trillion token. Uh, and it was actually the initial big model uh, that, that was there. And it was the first to be open source, 
uh, to the community. Uh, it was the, it was actually the on the top of the leaderboard for the for several weeks, uh, and then uh, four or five months later, we have released the 180 180 billion parameter model. Uh, that was again an open source, and it was trained on 3.5 trillion token, uh, and it was actually again uh, topping all the leaderboards uh, like the Hugging Face uh, leaderboard, and we were doing better than the Lama 2, for example, at uh, at the time. So, in addition to this, uh, we have actually uh, set up a foundation, the Falcon Foundation, uh, that is working to promote and push forward the open source uh, AI. Uh, we are focusing on improving and bringing the Falcon model to the community to take it further, to contribute. So we contribute to the, to the model and then we give it back to the community as an open source. And can you talk about who is using Falcon at this point? Yeah, we have different businesses actually that are using Falcon. So in the community we have around, if you check the statistics, we have around 40 million downloads of the different versions of uh, Falcon. So it's, it's difficult to track exactly who is doing what on Falcon. This is the objective of the open source at the end of the day. Uh, from our side, we are working a lot with the government and private entities in the UAE, in the region. Uh, uh, government, when it comes to the uh, citizen services, for example, when it comes to resource management and these kind of things, we have different tracks. When it comes to healthcare, legal, for example, a lot of companies are using, are using that. We are expanding also to uh, work with different uh, countries and government uh, in, in the world where we are introducing uh, Falcon and we are also supporting them to uh, integrate Falcon into different businesses or different problems that they are solving on their, on their side also. Now, when you look at TII, you know, as you explained, you know, it's a publicly funded you know, organization. Uh, when it comes to Genetive AI open source, especially when we talk about the region there, you operate there, Abu Dhabi, uh, how much governments are prepared for it? Because here we see a lot of push, a lot of executive orders, a lot of regulations are there, a lot of policy making are there around AI, generative AI and open source. How much is happening there? I think the government is uh, sort of the nice thing in the, in the UAE, at least, is the government is very dynamic. Uh, the government of the UAE was the first to appoint the Minister for Artificial Intelligence, for example, and this was back in 2017. Is that real minister or is it AI minister? It's, it's a real <laughs> minister who is trying. We need, we need always to keep the human in the loop, right? That's, that's very important. So the government is, very, is working very closely with the different stakeholders to make sure that we understand AI, we understand where is it going. And I believe also we see a lot of uh, fear around the world, right? The governments, when I see the executive orders, Sometimes we honestly question why, why is the need for such uh, executive orders. But I think the uh, government of the UAE is looking into the question seriously, without fear, trying to understand and trying to make sure that we prepare the ground to make sure that the AI would be working in the proper way. When we look at TII, you know, of course, there are a lot of things. You folks are always working on something, and you said there are so many different things. If we just focus on LLMs, can you just give us a glimpse either from Falcon's perspective or what are the work that you folks are doing? Yeah, so currently one of the things that we are uh, keen uh, to, to sort of put in place is the multimodality, right? So we have been working on Falcon, and we have been um, among the first to release the Falcon on the text side. So now we are trying to move towards the multimodality, taking into consideration text, image, video, for example, combining everything in one model that is capable of handling this kind of uh, modalities. Multilinguality is an important thing. Uh, so we are making sure that, you know, the, the UAE is one of the countries where you have a lot of nationalities. So it's not just Arabic, it's not just English. You have Urdu, you have uh, different languages that are, that are around and people are pretty much interested into following into these, uh, these things. We have the mixtures of experts, of course, that we are uh, uh, exploring. The other thing is the safety uh, of the LLMs. Uh, we believe that it's, it's a critical sort of uh, item that we need to take care of. And we are putting, again, another a lot of effort into contributing to the community uh, through the uh, Falcon Foundation, bringing people together to sort of have different perspectives on, on, the, on the AI. Uh, we want to also contribute to reducing the bias because what we see today is most of the uh, trainings that are done 
are mostly, I would say, uh, Western oriented. So we need, we are looking into how to make, uh, to introduce more objectivity, at least uh, in, in, in the models. And these are key issues, I believe, that everybody should be uh, paying attention to. And working around a community, around the Falcon Foundations and other initiatives, we are very open to contribute to different foundations and alliance uh, around AI and uh, LLMs, around this safety, uh, removing the bias and these kind of things to make things open, transparent for everyone to look into and understand what's going on inside the models themselves. How do you see open source can play a role in removing some of those biases? Well, that's, I think, the key of uh, building and working in a community, right? So uh, the issues we have seen in the past, again, around the LLMs and the bias is because there is one one unique line of thought, I would say, around the data that we put inside. Uh, we actually start the training from, from the web that is already biased, right? So, and we don't give necessarily the floor for others to express themselves. It's a statistical model or probabilistic model which will definitely consider or be impacted by the bias that is already in the data. So the whole objective around building, for example, the Falcon Foundation is actually to, build, to bring other perspectives to the table. And this is the, uh, the, the, the path that we are taking to make sure that not only our perspective will be implemented in our models, but also the perspectives of others. And having, combining these perspectives, that, that, that won't be an easy task, for sure. But it's a challenging task, but it, has, it is worth exploring at the end of the day to make sure that the views of different uh, nationalities, different, I don't know, uh, thoughts will be actually added to the models to make sure that at least we reduce the bias. At the end of the day, maybe we will not eliminate it straight away, but at least reduce the bias that we see nowadays in the LLMs. Can you talk about the development of Falcon itself? How have you ensured that it doesn't have its own bias? Because sometimes the bias are subconscious, you don't, you don't even realize them. Absolutely, I think when we talk about the bias, there is always the risk to, uh, uh, to, 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 to get into a censorship, right? We don't want to get into that, right? So we are not claiming that uh, Falcon is not biased. That, that, that's not real, right? And I think as we move forward, even the evaluations that we are doing on the LLMs in general, they get more sophisticated and we identify biases that are there, but we didn't see in the past, right? So again, I think one of the main keys to get out of this bias or reduce it at least is to bring different perspectives on the model, right? So whenever we get into this question again, the issue gets very close to the censorship. When are we stopping? And when we talk about censorships, it's, it, it, it starts, it, it triggers all kinds of discussions and we need to be careful also on, on, that, on that side. So what we are working on is basically, in addition to having different perspectives, also look at the data. What kind of data we are injecting in the model? Uh, and again, there is, there, there is a very sort of a thin border between removing the bias, putting an effort to remove the bias, and the censorship. So we need to be careful there. But I think we need to be open-minded because this question has to be solved from the research perspective first, and then we go to the philosophical one eventually on where do we stop. Dr. Hakim, thank you so much for uh, taking time out today and not only talk about the importance of open source, but open source in AI space. Uh, great insights about uh, removing the bias, making sure that uh, things are not unbiased and maintaining the file balance there. Um, I really love those insights and I would love to, you know, whenever you want to chat more about what TII is doing there, but I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thanks a lot.